Oh, the feel of power. Stop the FOMO. Do you ever fear of missing out on getting the right TV mount for your amazing new TV? Well, today I'm going to help you select a full motion mount with my tips on buying the right one for you because Amazon is filled with TV mounts. So many of them, all different types. As many of you know, I review TVs and lots of them, whether they're mounted on a wall or mounted on my mobile TV stand. I know my TV wall mounts and I'm here to help you select the one wall mount that will fit your use case. To begin, you need to know the difference between the three types of TV wall mounts, the full motion wall mount, which is what we're gonna talk about today, and the other two, the fixed wall mount and the tilting wall mount. Fixed wall mounts are flush against the wall, like the one that's holding my frame right there. There's no gap between the TV and the wall, or very minimal gap. It's really there for aesthetic reasons, right? So the LG OLED Gallery Series or the Samsung The Frame, they're there to look good, and so you would choose a fixed mount if you want, no gap between the TV and the wall. The tilting mount is up to two inches from the wall, so there's space for it to tilt. Now, why do you need it to tilt? Like this, well, if there's glare above, tilting it slightly downward will eliminate some of that glare. And if it's above a fireplace and you want it to tilt towards your sitting area, that also helps with the viewing angles. But the last one, the full motion mount, is the most confusing one because, well, basically, if it's not a fixed mount or it's not a tilting mount, then everything else is a full motion mount. So even if a TV just does this, that's a full motion mount, right? That's not an almost motion mount, not a half motion mount. And no, I do not consider this a full motion mount. I believe to be a full motion mount, full motion mount, it requires motion on five axis. And we're gonna get into that in a minute. But first, I know you have a very pressing question that I'm gonna answer. Which full motion mount is holding my reference king of TVs? The Sony A95K QD OLED that costs over $3,000? It is none other than our sponsor today, Pippi Shell. Hit it. If you're anything like me, we're constantly shifting our TV around to get a perfect angle, enter today's sponsor. PP Shell offers a wide selection of TV mounts, from fixed mounts to tilt mounts to what I need, the full motion TV mount. Paper Shell offers this no fuss TV wall mount for your extra large TV. This model, the Pix F2, fits TVs from 50 inches to 90 inches with a weight bearing capacity of 130 pounds. But beyond strength and power, what makes it so good? Five axis fully articulating arm. Wait, five axis? There is one, two, three, four, and is distance five? Yep. Once mounted, it's just under four inches from the wall or as far away as 29 inches from the wall. And for a limited time only until November 13th, 2022, my viewers will get an exclusive discount. Use my code FOMO FOMO. Click on the link in the video description below and get your discount today. Now let's get into my tips for choosing the right full motion TV mount. Tip number one, get a true five axis motion TV wall mount. None of this business. What does five axis mean then? Well, let's count them beginning with one. This is a viewing angle. That's obvious the TV can point in different directions. Two, we know is the tilt, right? It tilts downward or slightly upward. Three is the rotation to get the level correct. Doesn't need to rotate a lot, just enough to adjust it so that it's level. Fourth is shifting the TV left or right, because let's say your studs are here, but you need your TV to be centered a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. Having that fourth axis allows you to shift that TV left or right. And five, this is how far the TV extends forward or retracts back towards the wall. And this is the first step to deciding which TV mount to get because you have to decide how far do you need that TV mount to extend. Some mounts can extend over 40 inches while others maybe will extend to 20 inches. It really depends on your needs. So if you know exactly how far it needs to extend, make sure you search specifically for that extension maximum. So for example, when I got my first, first ever full motion 
it was the TV mount was a Sanus and it was $500 and man it extended 30 inches out and all the way back to two and a half inches that two and a half inches close to the wall apparently is very expensive that's why it was $500 but additionally it was able to hold up to 175 pounds clearly I overdid it it was for my Sony A9G this was my first year reviewing TVs I wanted the best well, I got the best, but I really didn't need a full motion TV mount that went all the way 30 inches and all the way back two and a half inches and hold 175 pounds when my OLED wasn't more than 45 pounds. And more importantly, I never had to retract it to two and a half inches. Most of the time, it's out here around 12 to 25 inches, right? And ultimately, I could have saved a lot of money. So if you only need the mount to go out, extend out, 30 inches or so, and then when it retracts, maybe less than four inches, there are a lot of affordable mounts out there. So keep in mind what your needs are. The farther you have to extend the TV, let's say over 30 inches, you'll be paying a little bit more, and the closer it is to the wall as well, you also may be paying a little bit more, and more importantly, how strong does it have to be? What is the load-bearing tolerance? Normally up to 130 pounds, reasonably priced, 175 pounds like my Sanus, yes, over $300. So definitely keep that in mind. And tip number two, make sure your mount can handle a TV size that you will be getting in the near future. So let's say you're buying a TV mount for a 55 inch TV today, but in three years, you're gonna upgrade to an 85 inch TV, make sure the mount can handle up to 85 inches. The good news is most of these high quality full motion mounts can handle a 50 inch TV all the way up to a 90 inch TV, but make sure you choose the right mount to do so. Tip number three, let's save you some money. You should buy your mount during Black Friday or Prime Day. This is when all the TV mount makers on Amazon are hitting their hardest discounts. So if you're buying a TV on Black Friday anyway, get your mount at the same time. No differently, if you're getting on Prime Day, get the mount at that time. So keep that in mind. And tip number four, this is my favorite tip and one I consider a necessity, Maybe because I'm a guy, but almost every instruction manual requires you to have something called a socket wrench, right? Because you're taking these long screws, half inch size, more often than not, and you're drilling it or driving it into these giant studs, right? Two by fours at least. Not acceptable. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to take. So impact driver my friend oh this is like the best thing on earth right you put this in and you can drive it split second you're done now i was using it and i realized it's kind of loud so i upgraded to the makita xdt19 now the dewalt is fine a little loud All right, listen to this The Makita, not only is it quieter, more powerful, has a special wood drilling mode, and the batteries last longer. Should I be doing impact driver reviews? Tip number five, make sure you put the brackets on the TV first before you do any measurements on your wall, putting the template up on the wall, before you do any of that. Put the brackets on the TV first and almost every instruction, I think every mount instruction tells you to do this, but none of them tell you why. So let me tell you why. You need to do this in order to properly position the, the mount on the wall, right? When you have it mounted on your TV, you know where the center of that bracket is because if this is the bracket and this is your TV, right? The bracket center is where the mount arm is. So it's easy. Assuming this bracket is centered on your TV as well. Unfortunately, on my Sony A95K, that's not the case. <laughs> where, where the VESA, where the VESA drill holes are, <laughs> when you put the brackets on, it's not centered on the TV. It's actually a few, several inches lower. So if this is my TV, the center of the TV is up here and the brackets are mounted down here, which means Rather than being mounted down here, it's gonna be up about four or five inches. That's a problem because 
I have ceiling mounted speakers. So I have to very precisely make sure that I know exactly how this TV is gonna mount. And the best way to do that is put the brackets first, mark the center of the TV, all right? If the center of the TV is a little bit higher than the brackets, then I need to make that same adjustment by bringing <laughs> the wall mount that same number of inches lower. And since I put the brackets on first, I know how many inches of adjustment to make, and therefore I have perfect clearance with my ceiling speakers. So remember, put the brackets on first, find the center of your TV. If the center of the TV is the same as the center of the bracket, you're good to go. If it's off either above or below, you need to make adjustments accordingly when you position the height of your wall mount. And if you are interested in getting a Pippi Shell TV wall mount, don't forget to use my code FOMO FOMO before November 13th, 2022 to get a discount. Let me know in the comments below, which one did you end up getting? The fixed, the tilt, or the five axis full motion? And as a bonus question, did you end up using the socket wrench or an impact driver. Until next time, stop the FOMO.